Well, hello, church family, visitors, and friends. Welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church for our July 1st Wednesday midweek devotion. Boy, how time flies. It's already July. I hope you have a wonderful July 4th weekend, and let's, um, let's be praying for our church members, praying for those who are having to battle this COVID virus. Let's pray for encouragement for our uh, essential workers. Let's pray for um, protection for our families and friends. If you would, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you for loving your people, dear Lord, and I thank you for your mighty hand of protection that you put over your, uh, your people, dear Lord, and your wonderful example of grace, dear Lord, that you provide to all those who trust in you. Lord, thank you for this church, dear Lord. Thank you for our members, for our visitors, dear Lord. I thank you for the love that you show your people, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would walk with us through this devotion today, Lord, that you would open our hearts and show us the, uh, the revealing word as you have provided, dear Lord. I pray that you would remind us of your greatness and the importance of your Bible. Lord, and I thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining me. We're, um, we're back to uh, video devotions and sermons for a couple of weeks. So if you will, uh, bear with me with that. I pray that you would tune in and just uh, have a little bit of time to either listen or watch our devotion as we're putting forth the Word of God. And I pray that it touches you in a mighty way. I'm in the book of Psalms today. Psalms 19, C.S. Lewis has described Psalms 19 as the greatest poem in, in the book of Psalms. It is one of the, the most wonderful lyrics in all the world C.S. Lewis refers to. And I want to show you a few examples here in God's word. Psalms 19, beginning in verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. Now watch verse 3. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice, the heavens, the voice of God, goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. <clears throat> it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived from its warmth. Now more than ever, we see the evidence in people today that we need to believe in God. We need the reminder of who God is, what he has done, for each and every one of us, people today seem to think that they can make their own commandments. They can call their self superior. Um, people chase after their own passions. And um, they, they pick up people who are wandering. And these people end up following them. We are witnessing a society today that will follow the loudest voice and the biggest crowd. And today I want to tell you that there is a God. There is only one creator. There is only one God. And he reveals himself to us in so many ways. And I want to show you a few ways in Psalms 19 that he reveals to us who he is and how he speaks to you and I. Psalms 19 is, is composed of almost two parts, if you will, of the, uh, this great poetry. The first part is a morning hymn, if you will, declaring the glory of God, the heavens, the, uh, the glorious movement and the warmth of the sun. The second part in verses 8 through 11, we begin to see a, a reminder of God's absoluteness, of his uh, sure word um, to restrain from sin and restrain from evil and to worship God. All these things are wonderful to look at today and be reminded of how great God is and, and the reminder that he shows us. The first thing here I want to show you is God's word in the heavens and the scripture speaks about that. He begins to point to the heavens. There is God's word in the heavens. It is a confirming word of who God is. The heavens declare who God is. And not only that, but they declare God's existence. Look at verse 1. The heavens declare, they're screaming God's glory. The glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands. Uh, Paul states in Romans chapter 1 for your, um, your off time reading. That man has no excuse not to believe in who God is. When, you, when, when I think about that and I think about the world today, a lot of times I think that people begin to think that this is going that judgment day will be like a court uh, proceeding. 
that we'll be able to argue our case. Well, Paul mentions it. The psalmist writes that God is declaring his glory. There will be no there will be no rebuttal. There will be no petition on our part to say why we did not believe in God. Because the heavens declare his glory, number one. Declaring. Keep in mind this is an active, continuing action. That they are continuing to declare who God is. Think about David, the psalmist here, as a shepherd boy. He had probably experienced many nights underneath the, the starry sky uh, shepherding his sheep. Who better to write about this to experience and look into the, the vast unknown of heaven and, and to be able to recognize God's glory, God's creation, what he has done for you and I just to show us who he is. David was not interested in, in, in any scientific theory and any phenomenon or any type of event that took place to create what we know today. But he recognized God as the creator. And he also reminds us of something else. We don't have to be a Bible scholar or a seminary professor, seminary student, or a seminary graduate to recognize God's glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. A continuing thing. It speaks of God's glory, his greatness, his goodness, and most definitely the grace of God. God's confirming word through the heavens that he is God, that he is real, and he is alive more than ever. Look at verse 4. I thought this was quite interesting here. <clears throat> Yet their voice, the, the voice of the heavens, when we look upon the heavens, the voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Whose voice? The heavens' voice, God's creation, God's mighty hand. But notice what scripture says. But no words were spoken. There's something very special about that, to be quiet, to be still, and to know that God is God. To let him speak to our hearts. This is something I think we need to be reminded of today. I remember as a believer, as a Christian, one time sitting in a congregation. I wasn't preaching. I had no ambition of being a pastor. I knew the Lord was calling me to do something that, that would be great in, in, in his eyes. May not in may not be in man's eyes. But I knew that the Lord was leading me to something and I had no idea that it would be this. But during that service, the invitation came and the pastor asked for all eyes to be closed. And I'll go ahead and admit right now my eyes were closed at the beginning. But later on in the, during the invitation, I opened my eyes. And what I witnessed was God's glory, God's grace, God's presence being manifested right there in that congregation. But yet no words were spoken. A sinner stepped out of the aisle, a lost man, and he went down to the altar, and he poured his heart before the Lord. There were no words. There were just tears. There, were, there, were, there was crying. There was meditation. There was prayer. And God's revealing grace and salvation, I witnessed that day as I opened my eyes, as I also have witnessed in my own life. I think today we need to be reminded of that. Maybe perhaps today more of us need to peep open our eyes and see God's wonderful grace, his salvation taking place, but yet we seem to be a people who chase after the loudest microphone or the loudest megaphone or the biggest crowd. And sadly enough, we will follow that same voice over the cliff of sin and destruction if we're not careful. So yes, God's word is declared in the heavens. Something else God's word is, is we need it within our grasp. We need it in our possession, in our hands. And he has not only provided through the heavens, but he also provides it to you and I. Look at verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. I want you to remember that because we're going to talk about that in just a minute. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Verse 10, they are more precious than gold, more pure than gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them, keeping them there is great reward. Notice something that the scripture says here, making the wise, making wise the simple. 
This is another reminder. We don't have to be some type of biblical scholar to understand that God is real and he is placing his word in our hands and in our heart. The words of God are right. The law of the Lord is perfect without error, refreshing the soul. Sometimes the word of God is the only cure. Today and days past and days in the future, God's word is the only cure, refreshing the soul. It is revealing. It talks about the radiance of giving of light. The most important thing here that I want to show you in this scripture is the psalmist, the psalmist isn't declaring God's word in some places that we can't access. This isn't us packing our bags and getting ready to go on this biblical trip to find God's word. But the great reminder here is, is that God's word can be in our hands. His word. Through the faithful prophets, the faithful scribes, the writers, we have, we have the word of God available to each and every one of us. It has outlived the many um, historical events to destroy the Bible. Many dictators or people who have come to power who have tried to diminish the Bible for what it is. But yet the word of God still stands. And we have to be reminded the more we read it, it is hidden within our heart. That even if our Bibles are taken away, we have God's word within our heart. It has endured criticism. It has endured examination. It has endured ridicule. It has been denied, but the word of God still stands today. And I pray that we recognize the value of the word of God. So our first point is, yes, God reveals himself to us through the heavens. The second thing is the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple, making the, the least educated man the wisest with the word of God. Yes, we need it in our hands and in our hearts. I want to show you something else the psalmist talks about in verse um, 9, I believe it is, that they are more, I mean 10, they are more precious than gold. Than pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. Than honey from the honeycomb. The great question is, how important is God's word to you and I? How many of us truly treat God's word, the Bible, as gold or as gathering gold? Today it's sad to say, but it's true, that the Bible has taken a back seat to society. Our Facebook pages, our Twitter, Instagram, magazines, newspapers, we all put them before the Bible in many occasions. The Bible is not the first thing we reach for to read in the mornings when we get up. I read an article here just a few weeks ago about a lady in Arkansas. She was at one of those diamond places where you go to, to search for diamond, and she had found a a two point something carat diamond and they had her picture on the on the uh, on the blog that I was reading and the uh, the establishment or the business there in Arkansas who has this diamond mine or, or diamond place where you go and search for diamonds they was talking about the the rush of people that came in the weeks after that diamond was found of people coming in to find their own diamond they were obsessed with finding gold if you will something of value as a frenzy they were digging, they were raking, they were sweating, they were jogging, walking, running, climbing. They were exerting effort to find a treasure. And the question today for you and I is how do we approach the word of God? Do we treat it like we're looking for gold or diamonds? We have it. All the answers are there in the Bible. Perhaps we need to get that excited about God's word. To the believer, God's word is gold. To the believer, God's world, word is diamond. It is precious to the believer. And I want to tell you as a testimony today, God's word is precious to me more now than ever. When you have nothing else to lean upon, we have God and we have his word. People will disappoint us. Society will discourage us. The world has gone crazy, but the word of God still stands and is still accurate and is still true. Thank God for his word. Another thing that God's word is, it is instructional. Many times in some of my seminary classes, the professor will, will, will give us a bunch of chapters of a book to read and then a supplement book to read and then several chapters in the Bible he'll want us to read you know, within a, 
a few days and he'll put on a video and he says this is an instructional video in other words it'll give you a little insight or a little edge to what you're about to uh, undertake verse 11 says this by them your servant is warned in keeping them there is great reward <clears throat> God's word is instructional the world needs instructions now more than ever if we stay on God's side, if we want to live a noble life, if we want to stay out of trouble, if we don't want the game wardens or the law to come knocking on our door, we need to obey God's word. God's word, word will keep us from harm and danger. It will guide us and it will protect us. And perhaps today when we look around and we say, how did I get in this situation or this mess? Perhaps we need to be reminded that we should have leaned upon God's word more. God's word, precious as diamond, diamonds and gold. Speaking of those, we have to recognize that God's word is profitable. Verse 11 again. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them, God's word, there is great reward. Great reward. I saw another Facebook uh, post here. It's been several months ago and it was a, a, a big site. It was a web page link. And it said, if you have not received your stimulus check from the government, this may be why. And it had thousands and thousands of likes and thousands and thousands of comments. And the number one reason why most people had not received their stimulus check from the government was because they needed to go in to the IRS webpage and update their address and or their bank account information. Can you imagine the, the flood of people who were... Uh, taking this uh, this resource or this information so that they could get this money from the government. Well, think about being profitable and being valuable and think about God's word. Perhaps we need to chase after God's word in that type of way. We have God's word. The Bible is full of information and it is profitable. It is knowledge. It is confirming and it is convincing. It teaches us that God does exist it teaches us what God expects from us, and it also teaches us God's great love for mankind. From the beginning of the book to the end of the book, God's great love story that he demonstrates his love to all mankind. What a fool we would be to dismiss the importance, the value, the profitability, the instructions of God's word. Thirdly, we see God declared in the heavens. We recognize, of course, uh, we need the Bible in our hands. It's profitability. It's instructional. God's word, we need it in our hearts. It's not enough to have God's word in the heavens. It's not enough to have God's word in your hand. We need and must have God's word in our heart. When it's in our heart, it will convict us. Look at verse 12. But who can discern their own errors? A lot of times we look over our own mistakes, don't we? We look over our own errors. But before you know God, you've got to let the Word of God come in and speak to your heart. But who can discern his own errors? There's one thing, uh, uh, there's very few things I love to watch on TV, but I, but I do love to watch the History Channel and the Discovery Channel. And I was watching a show one time it was a bunch of divers, and they got on this very big boat, and they had set, set out, and they were going to do some photography diving. They were going to go down and do some photography of some reefs, of uh, uh, fish and things like that. And the uh, the master diver, before they got ready to, to plunge into the ocean, they had got where they were going. He told the other divers, now we will be over a fault, a earth crust fault under, under, the, under the ocean. So if you see massive amounts of air pockets or bubbles, Coming up from uh, from underneath the, the the you know the bottom of the ocean, don't be alarmed. We're we're sitting right on a a fault. One of the divers said, you know, he says I've dived here many times and I've never seen a crack or a fault. And the master diver said, well, that's that that's the thing about it. You won't see it, but believe me and, and listen to me. He says it's there. You will see the mass bubbles come up. And many times I think about our own lives here because a lot of times. We, we, we have those hidden sins within our heart that we don't tell anybody about. We don't even tell God about. We don't try, we don't reveal them to God. 
Jeremiah chapter 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. We have those hidden sins many times in our heart. And what we need to be reminded of is perhaps we need to ask the Lord, Lord, reveal to me, convict me, forgive me of these hidden sins. And the thing about hidden sins is they will cause a catastrophe within your life. We are driving down the road in our vehicle. Everything looks fine. We pop the hood. Everything looks good. But it's an internal problem that will cause a, a motor malfunction that will leave us stranded. Lord, reveal to us those hidden problems within our life. God's word is cleansing. What did the scripture say? Forgive my hidden faults in verse 12. Cleanse my hidden faults. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Revealing through God's word. God's word controls our heart. What, what did we just mention earlier? It'll, it'll, keep, the, it'll keep, keep us from getting in trouble. It'll keep us on the straight and narrow. Verse 13, keep your servant from all willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. This should be our prayer. Listen to me, visitors and church members and friends. This should be our prayer each and every morning. Lord, guard my heart. Lord, guard my eyes. Guard my thoughts. Guard my mouth. And a world that will try to pull me down today. Lord, guard your, 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 your faithful servant, Lord. What a reminder we need today. If we allow it, sin will rule over our life. It will rule in us. It will rule through us and around us. Lord, guard our hearts, I pray. And then finally, I want to share this with you in verse 14. This is the last verse here in, in Psalms, Psalm 19. And it is a wonderful reminder of the relationship we can have with God. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. David is, is proclaiming. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock, my redeemer. This is communion. This is inner peace. This is a, a relationship with God. And we need this peace in our life now more than ever. The testimony of the saints. We see God through the heavens. We hear his, his word declared through his word his written word, the Bible, though we may not hear it, Scripture says, there will be no excuse. It makes the average wise. It makes us all wise in looking, searching God's word, and it is valuable, more valuable than pure honey or honey from the honeycomb. I shared this story with my mother, and I've never shared it with anyone before. And last week, something happened in, 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 in my life that, that kind of made me step back and think for a minute. It just really made me um, evaluate what is important. It made me uh, have a greater compassion for people. And I thought about this and I shared it with my mom and I'm going to share it with you uh, today for this devotion and then we're going to close. Um, at my secular job, of course, Many, many years ago, I, I met this man, and he was a, the definition of the word country. I'll never forget him. He, he spoke country. He talked country. Um, he lived country. He was not the most educated man. Matter of fact, he wasn't even the most elegant man. He was shaped a little bit different than most people. Um, he, he was just really, he, he, he was just a, a different type of person. Um, he loved breakfast foods. He loved eggs. He lived with his mother and his wife. He loved his family. He loved life. Um, I befriended him early on in his employment at the, uh, at the plant. Um, he had a wonderful passion for gospel music. He loved some of the same groups that I loved. He knew a lot of gospel music history, which I, I found very fascinating. And talking with him, um, we shared those interests, and we shared another interest and that interest was we love the Lord. And I believe that's what brought our relationship together. And um, the one thing about his relationship with the Lord is he wouldn't mind sharing it with anybody. And I thought about this last week as 
peculiar as he might have been to many people when they looked at him, or even when they heard him, I can sit here today and tell you I would have let this man fill my pulpit any day of the week, any Sunday of the year, because he loved the Lord and he didn't mind telling people about it. And I would have let him fill the pulpit today if he was alive. But early part of last year, he passed away. This man had the love of the Lord in his heart. He had the word of God in his heart. He understood the value of scripture. He wasn't the most elegant to speak it. But if you listened, you could understand his love for God and God's word. He knew that God's word was more precious than gold. His mere presence spoke of who God was. He knew the importance of communion with God. And I pray and I wish we had more people who were passionate about God like this gentleman was. Who no doubt is more alive now than he's ever been. On any given day, at any given hour, we should be ready to tell what the Lord has done for us. We see God's glory in the heavens. We have God's word in our hands and in our heart. We recognize it as more precious than anything we could possibly have. We should be eager to tell of what the Lord has done for us. The psalmist recognized it. He declared God's glory and perhaps inspired others. Indeed, has inspired me. And as the psalmist write, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing, Lord, in your sight. He says, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the encouraging words you've given us today, Lord. Let our song be of your goodness from our heart. Lord, thank you for reminding the hearer today of your revealing power, your revealing word, your revealing greatness and value, Lord. Thank you for loving your people, Lord. And Lord, move us to a closer relationship with you. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and we ask all this in his wonderful name, we pray. Amen. It's been great to be with you for this midweek devotion. We'll be back Sunday. Tune in for our Sunday message, and I pray the Lord, I pray that this finds you doing well. God is good, and indeed he is good all the time. God bless you.